What is going on y'all? Welcome to the Thai Life. My name is Min and today I want to talk about almond shape. Why is it that every time I get clients come to me and they tell me nobody can do an almond shape. And yes, I have seen other nail tech who have done almond shape. And that shit looks like jelly beans, Skittles, M&M's. Come on y'all. They ain't almond shape. You know where they get the term almond shape from? Almond shape came from almond seed. That's it. That's it, y'all. It ain't that hard. If y'all able to look at an almond seed, y'all can do an almond shape. And the thing is, I'm gonna show y'all how to do an almond shape because I see so many people just tell me that they hate almond shape. And to me, I like almond shape. It's easy. So let's go ahead and get at it, y'all. So the first thing I did, y'all, was I applied the tips on. And the tips that I'm using is the square curve tips. The reason why I like these tips is because I feel like it looks nice when it comes to almond shape after you shape it up. I feel like the straight tips looks good for ballerina and coffin and maybe stilettos. But as I'm using these square tips, I want to make sure that I apply them on very nice and straight. A good shape starts out with some straight tips, okay? After that, once you apply the tips on nice and straight, you ask the client how long they want their nails to be. And when it comes to almond shape, you know you have to file the tips a little bit more to form the shape. So you might want to cut the length a little bit longer than what the clients ask. Once you cut down the length nice and even, okay? The best way to measure the length to make sure it's nice and even what you want to do is you want to take two of the fingers of each hand and you match it together. And you're going to match it from cuticles to the tips, okay? Cuticles to the tips. Once you match all the fingers, whatever nail that's sticking out longer compared to the other one, you cut that one down. Once you get the length all even, you get this little scissor and you cut the tips into an almond shape. It is important that you kind of cut it. And, and here's the thing about cutting the tips into an almond shape. You t this is just like a sketch. You just have to cut it so that you have a, an idea of how you're gonna form the shape, okay? Once you cut that, this is where the critical part comes in, y'all. You got to get the file and you got to start shaping into an almond shape. And this part can take you a long time, which is fine because you rather shape now then you rather not shape what after you do the application because it takes so much time and effort to shape into an almond shape after the application. So now before you put the application on, the tips is very soft, it's easy. You want to shape into the almond shape. But here's the crazy part, y'all. When you guys are shaping, you got to know how to hold the hand. You got to know how to hold because here's the thing about the shape, y'all. On your hands, on your fingers, you're gonna have the two widest area, which is the side cuticle. Your shape cannot be any wider than that unless you're doing duck feet, okay? Remember that. Once you get to the widest part of the cuticle, your shape should shift in. It has to shift in, okay? Once it shifts in, that's when you know it's gonna flow with the fingernails, okay? As you guys can see, I'm spending a lot of time to shaping, and at the same time, when you guys are shaping, how you hold the client's hands, you want to hold it kind of tight. Because when you shape and it gives you the client's that vibration, it feels awkward, it feels painful. And you want to make sure you make a relaxation for them when it comes to the shaping part, okay? And there's really no right or wrong when it comes to the shaping, y'all. What matters that the shape comes out exactly what you envision it to be. If it's an almond shape, it should look like an almond seed. It shouldn't look like no jelly beans. It shouldn't look like no Skittles or M&Ms, okay? And once you shape the nails before the application, trust me, the process just gets so much easier. After you do this part, all you have to do is apply the acrylic onto the nails, okay? Once the acrylic is onto the nails, all you have to do is all you have to do is just clean the side of the nails. The reason why you have to clean the side of the nail is because when you do the application, you're gonna have a lot of like dry acrylic that's just kind of like lingering on the side of the nails. And by using the file to clean around the cuticle, it's easy for you to go with the e-file. If you don't do this part right here, 
it's just gonna give you a hard time trying to clean the nails with the e-file okay so after you do this kind of little rough shaping since the shape is already there you do a little rough after the application going in with the e-file is so important y'all like the e-file is gonna give you the definition of the shape because you're gonna get to be able to clean the side of the cuticle the side of the nail and flush the cuticles to make it look very natural but remember this Buffing is also important because buffing is going to get you that nice crisp shape and cleaning all around. Anything that's lingering is going to clean it off. And at the end, y'all, that is how you do an almond shape. It's really simple. Just envision how an almond looks like. And at the end, y'all, look at the final product. Very nice. It flows with the client's nails. And I tell you what, y'all can do this exact shape anytime, any day. I know you guys can do it, it's really easy, it's really simple, and trust me, if I can do it, you can do it too. So if you guys love what you saw and you guys just learned something about it, go ahead and hit the like and please subscribe to my channel so I can make more fun content and educational for y'all to help y'all grow in the industry. Out.